Karaoke was good? Yes, yes. It's always a good time, isn't it? Oh man, you guys are ready to do the questions. Let's get into it then. Let's get into it. We'll start with you. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, we just took a picture, didn't we? We did, yeah. How'd it turn out? Do you know? I haven't looked at it yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get it soon. So my question is, if you could have written a different ending for Gadrio, what would it have been? Um, there would have been a spin-off with cast, and they would have went off and did wonderful um, um, angel things, and, and Gadriel would always be the grounds of the joke because he never, he, he's, he's new to this world, and cast with all his new coolness and understanding the world and how things work in, 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 in media and what have you would be taking the piss out of Gadriel endlessly. Maybe that, or maybe, I don't know, maybe not the epic suicide that he did. Yeah, giving his life up in that way was a little traumatic. It was a little crazy. It was awesome. You know, that said, as a fan, it was pretty amazing. As an actor, I loved doing that scene. It was great. A lot of fun. And uh, um, I wouldn't change anything. You know, it, it could have gone in a different direction. There's always so many different possibilities. But I think um, I think the uh, the arc that we saw for the character was it was pretty cool, man. I, I hold it very dear to my heart. If you could have changed anything, what what would you have done? Oh God, I don't know. Too much pressure, huh? Yeah, too much pressure. Okay, next question. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So my question is, you know, last time I actually got to ask you about trick or treat, and this time I'd like to ask you if you could be involved in any of the three projects: Nine One One, This Is Us, or The Walking Dead. Which would you be involved with, and why? Hmm. 911, The Walking Dead, or This Is Us. I've seen some of This Is Us. It's really good. It's really good. I, I mean, I think that I really like the writing on it. And uh, uh, I know uh, John Huerta, who's one of the producers and one of the actors on it. John's excellent. I didn't get to share a lot of uh, scenes with him, but I did work with John in, in, um, in Castle. Um, I think that would be a really cool show to be a part of. I mean, all three of them would. 911 is is that which one is that is that a comedy? Not really. No, it's um, not it's, a, it's got Angela Bassett and Peter Krauss. Oh, I haven't seen it, but Bassett is a legend. She she's is. a she's so good, man. She's amazing. There's hey, two. I mean, those are great questions. I'd love to be involved with all of those projects. The Walking Dead. I was watching for the first four or five seasons. I was right into it, and I was given the graphic novels. Um, some point at a convention. I was blown away by those. Um, I, I dropped off though. I just never got back to the show. And it's not because it isn't incredible. I think I just, I had a point where I had to get away from all the zombie killing. I just needed a little break. But it's, um, I, I'd like to get back to it. How, how behind am I? Do I have a decade of shows to watch? It's like six years behind. If you stopped in four or five, it's now in 11 and it's wrapping with Okay, so four. it's doable. I can do it. It can happen. All right, well, I'll try and do that, and I'll try and get on one of those shows. Thank you. Hi. Hey, uh, I was just wondering, when you found out that Gadriel was going to eventually betray the Winchester Bros, how did you feel about that? Um, I wasn't given a lot of information about Gadriel and his whole arc. Uh, in the beginning, uh, they really didn't tell me anything. Like, I, I, I've told this story a couple times, but I think... For my audition, they actually gave me um, sides. Like the, the scene that I did was 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 cast scene. It was, it was Misha's scene from one of the previous episodes. I had no idea though. Um, so when I came in, they were like, "Well, listen, you're going to be playing an angel who's playing who's pretending to be one angel, but he's actually another." Um, and that was about it. Didn't give me a lot of information. So when I was reading the scripts, just like everybody else, I was learning each time, like kind of the direction it was going. I had a sense of where they were taking it, that they were kind of making a little bit of a evil, sort of nefarious character. But I, I try to play against that a bit, um, uh, just considering his history and through my own research, kind of finding out what Gadriel had been through. Uh, I just kind of made the choice that it wasn't so much that he was bad or he had ill intentions. He was just really trying to get redemption. And he was way too trusting, and he was just straight up damaged. Um, he wasn't uh, he wasn't clear of mind, and and, and uh, Metatron uh, took him in the wrong direction. And he was very trusting of him, but when he finally realized that that he'd been duped, he uh, he did whatever he could to uh, to make amends in the way that he saw fit. 
Thanks. Hey, you. Hi, it's me again. Uh, it's you. I gotta give this girl a shout out. She was so active on social media, there'd be, there'd be like a hundred tweets. You're all welcome. Today. He's here because of me. Try, <laughs> try to get me to get, get invited to the show. And I, I thank you for that. You and all your friends were so active, and it ended up working out. So I'm very grateful. Well, I'm thank very glad you. you're here. Um, my question is basically if you could pick, obviously, we all loved you as Gadriel. You were wonderful. But if you could pick somebody else in the entire Supernatural universe to be Monster, Dean, anybody, who would it have been? Like, who had the best character or scenes or whatever else that you would have really loved to have done? There were so many fantastic characters, man. I think Crowley would have been fun. But hey, listen, Shepard, love it. Love, 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 love his work. He's fantastic and he knocked it out of the park, but that would have been fun. Yeah. That would have been a blast to do for sure. That's Paul, that's Al Crowley. Hey, why not? Why not? Give me a crack at it. Let's do it. Uh, I was on a series, uh, briefly, a Joss Whedon series called Dollhouse. <laughs> there you go. Some fans there, thank you, thank you. And the, I, the, the, the premise of the show was so unique, is a lot of things that Joss does are. Uh, he's, he's really a brilliant guy, but the idea, the technology that we could be imprinted with another character, it was so attractive to me. And I, I know that the show, if it had gone on, it, it would have been the case that I was imprinted with, you know, a different personality and I would have been able to play another one of the characters. I know that that's, that, the overall arc, that's where Joss would have taken it. We never got to that point and I was always left wanting to do that, you know? I really wanted to get to that point where I could have played a another character on the show, or just a completely different character. Um, um, I don't know, maybe I'll still get the opportunity. We'll see. Reboot. Reboot. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, how are you? Uh, my question is, what was your favorite scene that you filmed as Good Jill? Um, well, the gentleman who went up recently mentioned the very last scene that I did, like the last scene see Gudriel before he sacrifices himself. That was challenging. Um, it wasn't like my favorite scene because it's difficult as an actor to get to that place. But I also really appreciate scenes like that. The ones that really, really challenge me and then I end up being happy with the work, like where the point that we got to. So I, I did enjoy that. Um, but I, there, was, there was more than a few cool scenes. Like Misha and I had very brief scene that was so comedic. It was just loaded. Um, I just wish we had had more because there was a real, it was real cool chemistry between the two of us, and um, you know, obviously with um, Jared uh, Jensen and I, we, we we had some great scenes too. I mean, there was one scene where he had me tied up and he'd been beating me, kind of not quite torturing me, but he he'd been giving it to me. And we had a very very heated scene, and I loved doing the dance with him, man. He he brought it one hundred percent, and that was uh, that was fantastic. I, I love it when I. Even you know actors like these guys who've been doing day in and day out, you know, 12 to 14 hours a day, five days a week, finishing on a Friday, you know, early hours Saturday morning, nine years into a show at the time, and they're still bringing it every time. They're showing up and they're they're doing the dance with you as an actor. They're being reciprocal. They're getting into it. They're they're giving you something to work with because that's what acting is. It's the dance. And unfortunately, a lot of actors they get so tired and they're so overworked as leads of show, they, they kind of dial it in. They save their energy for when the camera's on them, and then they can't really reciprocate to you, which makes it harder for you as the actor to really bring the performance. But that's not the case with those two boys, man. They really show up, and and, um, and I'm always uh, really grateful for sharing those scenes with, with them and them showing up 100% and giving me something to work with. Thank you. Hi. I just want to say um, I love you as Gadriel. You are awesome. Thank and you. I want to know: Is there something you always wanted to do uh, playing him that you weren't able to do, or a favorite scene that you had playing him? Um, yeah. Well, it's kind of similar to there uh, to the question I just had. Um, I think. You know, oftentimes when you do a show with such an incredible larger cast, you're always left wanting, uh, you know, to have had acted with some of the ones that you didn't get the chance to act with. 
you know, uh, I've worked with Shepard before. He came on Battlestar and worked with us for a season, and he was great. He was fantastic. Mark's such a good actor, right? And um, I wish we had shared some scenes. He worked with me on Dollhouse, too, but very briefly. Like, we played, you know, FBI agents together, and we'd have these brief, you know, contentious, sort of loaded scenes. His character hated mine, and, and uh, but I really like to mix it up with Mark. And, you know, Pellegrino's a legend. The man is such a an amazing actor. I've always been a huge fan of his work, so any scenes with him would have been amazing. Ruth, any of the gang. I mean, I would have loved to have worked with any of them. Um, but you know, that could still happen. Maybe on different projects. You never know. Maybe we end up working on a, on a, uh, is it t Texas Ranger? Texas Walker? What is it? Walker? Yeah. My bad. I got a little brain fart there. But uh, yeah, I, I uh, when you get to know actors and you hang out with them and you do these conventions and most of the actors in this circuit, they become really, you know, they're good friends, man. We've, we've traveled the world together. We've traveled a lot of places. We break bread together. We eat, we drink, we get to know each other, know about each other's family. So when you do get the opportunity to go and act with them, it's always amazing because, you know, we love to play that way. Yeah, thank you. Hey. Hi. I was wondering, um, when you, like, auditioned or, or got first got called on to the show, had you ever even heard of Supernatural before? And if not, have you like watched it? Or, or have, since then, did you actually watch it to see the show? Or did you just jump in uh, with both feet? <laughs> well, it, it, it was filmed in Vancouver, where I'm from and where I live mostly. Um, it, the show started around the same time that uh, a show that I was in called Battlestar Galactica. So I, I was always aware of it. And I caught a few episodes in the beginning, the first few seasons. Um, and again, I really enjoyed it, and I saw the appeal, and I saw how, uh, why it was success successful, but mostly because of the boys, you know, the, the, their chemistry and the thing, they, it's really unique in that way. Those guys really brought it, um, uh, just a, a unique thing, these two brothers fighting, you know, the supernatural, and, and, um, and I hadn't watched it for a few years, and then I, I remember catching a few episodes again when I got, uh, when I found out that I was, they were, they wanted me to audition for one of the new characters on there. Um, but the show had been around forever. It's employed so many friends, so many actors in Vancouver. I've got friends who have played multiple characters on there. You know, my best bud, uh, Alex Ponovic, has played two or three different characters on there. Mm -hmm. um, it happens in Vancouver. You end up recycling the actors. So, um, yeah, I've always appreciated it. I appreciate it with those guys that you can never, not recognize a show like this. Like as many years as it went, that's that's it's it's a it's a world renowned. It's people people know about the show, and, and as a result of how many years it went and how strong this community and this fan base is, which is ever changing. There's always a new generation of fan base, which is really fascinating because of streaming, because of that technology. And you know, a lot of you who are older fans who I was doing shows with seven years ago had kids, and maybe was, or they were too young to watch it in the beginning, but now they're in their teens, and they've marathon the shows and they're at the conventions with you guys now. I always find that fascinating. You know, I think that's really cool. That, that speaks to the, uh, to the power of the show and, and the strength of this fan base too. So, I know I digress a little all over the place, but that's the answer you get it. First I have to say, I love you so much and Gadriel like inspired me to like never give up and Definitely trusting people like me, but um, I have to say, um, what three shows would you be on besides Supernatural? The Originals, Chicago Fire, Doctor Who. What is The Originals? It's about a family of vampires, like the world's oldest vampires, and they live in New Orleans, and is they have new? to deal with like werewolves, vampire, other vampires, witches. Let it's me tell you my CW friend, too. I've never, I've never done, uh, I've never played a vampire before. And I was like kind of obsessed with uh, werewolves and vampires when I was a kid. Like I was always convinced, especially when I started acting, I'm like, I'm gonna play a werewolf. Like, I'm a werewolf. I'm a Yukon boy, I'm Wiley, I've howled at the moon more times than I can count. I'm gonna play a werewolf. And it hasn't happened in my career yet. So that show sounds amazing. I would love to be on that. <laughs> well, it would have been amazing. Then let's talk past sense. It would have been amazing to have been on that show. Maybe I could be on a new one. And then you mentioned... Uh, Doctor Who and Chicago Fire. 
Chicago Fire would be great too. I mean, I've got so much respect for anybody. First responders are, they're heroes. Every one of them. Incredible. Shout out to first responders. Every time I see them, I just nod my head in like complete reverence and admiration. Like to be such a giving and brave individual to be like, I'm going to take up one of the hardest, most dangerous jobs and be subjected to really horrible things all the time. But just to, 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 to help my fellow man and woman and and to save lives and do better. That says so much about a person. Anybody who follows, you know, becomes a person who's wander, like, man, I've got so much respect for them. They're just incredible human beings. I would love to have been on that show and uh, and uh, played a character on that. That would be a lot of fun. Oh, it's still going, so Is it still? Like, Great, well, maybe it'll happen. Maybe it'll happen. I'll tell you this. I had a period when I was younger, too, I was kind of fascinated with uh, detectives. Homicide detectives. I don't know why, but I just I always maybe because I, you know my father read me a lot of uh, Sherlock Holmes and things like that when I was a kid, and uh, it's the psychology of it too. I, I've always wanted to play a really good cop role, and I've done it a few times. But I there's something more significant in my future. I think at the age and stage I'm at now, hopefully something's coming down the line where I get to play a brilliant detective of some sort. That would be cool. I'm putting it out there because of you. What about the last one? What about Doctor Who? Hey, man, if, they that were, one? if they were going to bring me to the UK to play on the iconic series Doctor Who, I would do it in a hot second. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Okay, so like, sorry if I word this word. You played Goodrill, as we all know, who was kind of like, I'm a, he wasn't a bad character, but like he was like mentally like manipulative to an extent. But then you also played Michael Hastings in Criminal Minds, which is another one of my favorite shows. Who was also, yeah, who was also like kind of like mentally manipulative and like obviously like that got more physical because you know that he tortured D JJ and everything. So like the characters are kind of similar to an extent. Did you so like which character did you like have more fun playing? Well, I mean. It, the easy answer is Kadriel just because it was more significant and it was, you know, I worked with those guys over five or six episodes over an entire season, so it, it's more dear to my heart in that way. Um, that episode of Criminal Minds was a lot of fun. Hastings was a bad guy. He's a bad CIA guy. He was a sociopath. I mean, you know, if you see the way he ends, you know, torture, he said torturing JJ, it speaks volumes about who the guy actually was. It's challenging playing dark characters like that. Um, I don't mind it, and I think I was asking for it at that point in my career because I just finished playing, you know, I was coming off of um, um, two series where I was playing very upstanding sort of moral characters, right? And uh, um, Criminal Minds was fun. That was their 200th episode, I think, and they put a ton of money into that. It was a big episode. We did some epic battle scenes, and there was some really cool stuff in that, and I got to mix it up with incredible actors, you know, including JJ and, uh, and, uh, and Issei Morales, who's an amazing actor, and just all of them, it was a lot of fun. Um, Kedril's definitely more dear to my heart, um, but uh, it's funny when you associate them, because you know it's something I didn't even think about, but there are those similarities, for sure. I think that's a, that's a keen observation on your part. Um, but I've never really thought about them together in any capacity, you know? Just I had them very separate, because they were two different things. But it's interesting that you bring that point up. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Hi, so um, I'm a really huge fan of Dollhouse. I actually just rewatched it, showing it to my son for the first time, and he agreed it was amazing. How long had it been since the first time you watched it? Uh, when it first aired. <laughs> See, yeah, I, I, I haven't seen it again either, and I'm, I'm really do. I haven't seen it since it first aired. Rewatching it was like, because, yeah. you know, you remember what you knew and what you didn't see. Um, and we agreed, you know, it didn't get its fair shot. It was totally no, it shut off before it, you know, had a chance. It was just going places. I didn't, I heard the ending was kind of um, forced because it wasn't the original way it was meant to go because it ended last minute is my understanding. Yeah, they were just trying to wrap it up. Um, do you know what they really wanted to do with it? Or do you have a different version that you would have wrapped it up with, with the little bow? The first time I was really mad. The second time going read through the show, I was like, okay, I can kind of see this. So what did you think? I'll tell you this. 
So when we finished that first season, the first season was really, really trying. Uh, just briefly, this, this show, <laughs> fans, the, 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 the media, everybody was so excited about it. It was being built up to be such a huge thing that Joss Whedon was coming back and working with Fox that it was all over. There was so much press about it. And this is really just before social media was really blowing up. And uh, it was a huge press machine. I was super excited. And there was a lot of talk that we were going to open for 24, which was the number one show at the time. That's a big deal. It's like, my, I remember my manager calling me. He's like, everybody is talking about this show. You guys are going to open for 24. This is huge. We shot the pilot. The network did what they said they weren't going to do, and they came to Joss and said, listen, we want to change some things. So he had a, we had a reshoot pilot. Kind of cannibalized the first couple episodes, changed some things around. They were messing, the guy's, the guy's brilliant, right? He kind of got to let him do his thing, but unfortunately they didn't. And it really threw a wrench into the wheel very early on. So that first season was really trying for us as actors and everyone else. And I can't even imagine what Joss and his writing team were going through because they were left scrambling to, to make adjustments to something that was well thought out and planned already, as Joss does. And he had an incredible writing team with him, too. So it was really bumpy, and there were some episodes that just didn't work, and there were some that were great and showed you the real potential of the show, right? I mean, I personally, selfishly, I really loved Man on the Street, like my episode. Um, that was such a cool episode. And the way we ended, I wasn't sure we were going to get the second season. But the network sent Joss Whedon and I to Comic-Con New York to do a press tour. Um, and Joss kind of let me know, he's like, we're going to get the second season. And I was like, yes, okay, amazing, this is good news. But again, I think it was six episodes in. I remember the day on set, uh, Joss looked like something was on his mind, and I tried to pull him aside. We were doing a big ten-hander, like most of the actors were in, in the scene. And I was like, hey, you okay? Like, is everything okay? And he's like, I'm, I'm going to say something soon. And when he said that, I was like, ah, oh, shit. Because <laughs> I thought it might be, you know, something personal, but I could tell that it probably wasn't. And he, you know, he made the announcement to set. He said, listen, so uh, I hate to say this, but we've got word that the show is going to be canceled. But they're going to let us finish out our last eight episodes. So at that point, I made a, I made a, a real promise to myself that I was just going to make the most out of every single day that I had with the rest of these actors and this crew. Because oftentimes shows, the, the, the plug is pulled and that's it. You're done. You're not, you know, you, you're not going back to work. Uh, you're not going to see those people again. It can be really violent and, and, and hard, but this was, you know, we had an opportunity to see out the rest of the season, so that was a good thing. So I made a point of just reminding the younger crew, younger cast who, who didn't have uh, another series under their belt that, you know, they just really needed to enjoy it. And I did my part in a small way, and some of the other veteran actors did, and we all, we all had a good time, but you could tell that they had to make major, major adjustments. The, you're writing in such a way you know, Joss Whedon and his writing team, all Jane Espenson, like all the amazing writers that he's surrounded by, they're writing with very clear arcs about where they're gonna go season after season, you know? We're gonna give you bits of this in the second season near the end and it's gonna bleed into this in the third season and we'll, we'll develop the character in this way. And being told suddenly that the show's not gonna go and you've got eight, eight episodes to wrap things up, I can't even imagine the stress and the challenge of that. But they, they did as good of a job as they could do. And there was some really good stuff there. But um, yeah, like you, I, I, I've always said it, even if we could have got one more season, I think everyone would have been a lot more happy with, with uh, the way things ended. I think they would have been able to wrap things up you know, justly. That said, I think they did a great job and I'm always grateful to have had that experience. Thank you. Um, okay, Bob, I just forgot. Um, you blanked out? I blanked out. Hey, it happens. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> when you started playing Hilo in Battlestar Galactica, did you have any idea at that time how iconic that show would become? You know, that's a good question. I, I didn't, but I'll tell you, when I read the sides for my audition, I knew that it was something special. I'm old enough that I remember the original. I was a little, little kid, but I remember it. And, um... When I when I did the C, when I had this everybody knows what sides are right sides are the the the, the, the pages the scenes that you do for an audition um, um, so 
when I had the slides, it was this scene where I give up my seat. And I'm, the way I read him, he was mortally wounded, but he was trying to hide it from, from, from uh, Boomer. He didn't want her to know. He was a real hero type. You could tell that this guy was a special guy willing to give up his life and his seat to the resident genius so that he could survive because he saw, you know, there wasn't going to be much left of humanity. There was a nuclear war going on and they'd been attacked and the planet was going to be destroyed. So that said a lot about who he was. You could tell the writing was ex excellent, but at the time, I think there was a real lull in sci-fi shows of that capacity. There really wasn't anything like Battlestar. And to this day, Battlestar really set a new precedent. There's nothing really been like it since. There's been some excellent shows like The Expanse, and there's been other ones, but it was really doing something new. I don't think any of us really had a sense of the true potential of the show until we were well into it. Maybe maybe by the end of the first season, because I think end of the first season, or even by the time we started the second season, you know, we had like Time Magazine say, this is the best show on television. The, you know, the, crit the critics and people started, the response to the show started coming back and it was exceptional. That said, our veterans like Edward James almost were saying from the jump, Eddie was like, this could be the best thing you ever did. <laughs> we must be like, Eddie, don't, don't curse the rest of our career, please. And he was like, this will be the best thing you've ever done. Appreciate it, love it. He really wanted us to recognize because this is a, you know this is a Mexican American who came up in the business when it's very hard to be a Mexican American. There's only so many roles to fight for, but he was such an amazing actor, he's a seven-time Tony Award-winning actor, incredible actor that he came up and he struggled and he had a really really good career. He's an Academy Award nominee, but he knows how tough the business is and he'd been in it 40 years at that point. As had Mary, as had Michael Hogan. And they just knew how special it was. And that's why they signed on to the show, because they read that pilot, and they saw the potential of it, and they heard from the showrunners, um, you know, Ron Moore and uh, David Icke about you know, what, where they were taking the show, what the vision was. And they, they, you know, when you have actors of that caliber sign on with full confidence, and you're young like we were, when they'd say it, you'd want to believe in it, but you were also like, like is he being serious? Like, is it really going to be this big? And now looking back, and even two years in, we knew. We were like, wow, this is, this is really something incredible. And Eddie always said, 20 years from now, this show is going to still be talked about all the time. In the last couple of years, we've arguably had more press about Battlestar than you've ever had. It's nuts. It's crazy. This many years later, Eddie's just some sort of mystic. <laughs> Nostradamus, Eddie. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I'm just so grateful to have been a part of that amazing piece of art. And... Uh, and um, yeah, it's really amazing. Yeah, very, very grateful. Thank you. I thought of my girlfriend just said me. She's like, "Ha ha, somebody beat you to Battle Star." Ha ha. So <laughs> that's funny. my thing is, first of all, I just want to tell you, Hilo had the best character arc ever. Oh, thank you, man. Second of all, when when were you like uh, parading as Ezekiel that you wanted to just come out to Dean and go, "Fuck you, Dean, Ezekiel. I'm gonna fucking kick your ass, come get it, Ha ha. Like, if you could pick a scene other than when you actually had to. What scene would you come out and say, Dean, haha, I'm not what you think I am? Uh, I don't know, that's a tough one. I gotta turn that around on you, because you put some thought into that question. <laughs> I, come on, I man. You, you were there. Come on, man. <laughs> Which one? Dude, when you came out of the hospital that time, you guys were walking back to baby when your eyes blew, I was like, just slit his throat right there. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been the scene. It could have been the scene. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, that was a little bit of a scary scene. Listen, I think, in all respect to the writers on the show, but they were very much trying to take him in a, in a direction where I think if I had not fought, a, fought against it, performance-wise, my arc may, may have been, only been three episodes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think they, they were nine years in. They were very capable, and they were always writing in that way. You have to write in that way, because you might hire an actor, and you have an idea for him playing a character, and maybe there's a five episode arc or a six episode arc or maybe it's a two episode or three episode arc because things aren't working out. Like it just doesn't gel. The actor's not gelling or the character's not gelling with the other actors. Uh, there's not real potential to it. The, the, the fans aren't responding to it or not even the fans, you know, that there's just, it's not, it's not gelling, right? So they've always got it out. They can, they can get you out of there. But I, and again, I'm, I'm say this with all humility, but because of my experience up to that point, I know that you can manipulate the writers and the creatives in a way. 
by playing against what they often want you to do. And I've done it, and I did it in my very first gig, Battlestar Galactica, and, um, and it's a really powerful thing. And oftentimes it ends up for the better. Listen, sometimes, and I, I've also done it at times where it was just, I put a bunch of effort into doing something and it didn't work out. There was only one time. More times than not, if you do that extra work as an actor, you bring it in and you give them something more to work with, they'll see it in the performance and they have to write for it. So you're influencing them in that way. And when you're not one of the leads on the show and you're only doing an arc, that's a powerful thing. And it can also, like, which happened to me with Battlestar Galactica, because I wasn't, I was, my, my job wasn't guaranteed with that. I was always a threat to more than a few actors on that show, and every season I was waiting to be knocked off. But I made specific choices with Grace Park, who I did most of my scenes with, who played my wife, and we, we always brought in extra work. And as a result, I think it allowed me to stay on the show, and, and if anything, improved my arc. The writers had to write for my character. So I know I didn't answer your question, but I talked a bunch anyway. Thanks. Hi, Colin. Um, Hi. So you talked a little bit about how you researched the character, but since uh, Gadriel was introduced in the first episode, both you and Jared played him. So I was wondering if you talked to him about how to portray the character, or you kind of did it individually. Yeah, so I, I've told this story many times, but I'll, I'll tell you, I thought that I was going to be the first one playing him because they were like, yeah, you're gonna be playing this character, and you know, Jared will be doing it too, but they, they shared so, they shared nothing with me. Come on in, and you're gonna play this angel as potentially some other angel, and I'm like, oh, really, okay, can you tell me a little bit more? And they're like, no, that's it. <laughs> I said to my agent, I'm like, can you find out a little bit more? She goes, I'll try, and then she, she came back, she was like, no, they didn't give me anything. So you gotta work with those lines, and go get them, Tiger. And I was like, okay. So I made some choices, and I knew uh, I knew um, I knew Jared loosely. Uh, we met before through mutual friends. We met at uh, watching a UFC fight. Really liked him. Always knew, knew him from around town, you know. But we we weren't uh, we only knew each other at a certain level. And I ran into him on set, and uh, we were having a brief conversation, and he was talking about you know the character and congratulating me and things like that. And, I, I, was, I, was, I was really excited. I was like, this is going to be so cool. And then I had a day on set where I was supposed to do a big scene with, uh, with Jensen, where he gets me trapped in one of the fire circles. And uh, it's one of the first scenes where we see uh, Gadriel. And the director came up to me, and he said, hey, would you like to see what Jared's done? And I, I said, uh, what, what do you mean what, what, what he's done? Uh, well, what do you mean? And he goes, well, playing Gadriel. And I, I, I said, uh, I, I'm, I'm playing the drill. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing it first. I mean, I'm, I'm going first, right? And he goes, no, no, we, yeah, we changed some things and we, uh, we did a scene with Jared the other day. And I said, what? You did a scene? So the lead of the show has already played the drill and you're asking me if I want to see it? And when are we filming my scene? You get, uh, probably like, you know, three minutes, two, a couple minutes. And I was like, I, I don't know, what do you think? Do you think that's a good idea that I see when the lead of the character, who I'm supposed to be playing? Maybe I should, yeah, show me the scene. I was so upset. <laughs> Please show me the scene so I can fall on my face and get fired after the first episode. Like, come on, like, I don't know, is that a good idea? Maybe it's a good idea. So he shows me the scene and, and, and Jared was like, he was, you know, the, the way he was moving was like almost angelic and it was almost superhuman-like. Like he was, he was doing something very different. It was really strong choice and it was cool. And luckily, Luckily, it really kind of fell in with what I had planned in the way, the cadence, the, the way I was going to speak for Kadriel. He was doing something very similar. We hadn't even discussed it. So, um, but the physicality of it, the, the choice that Jared made, you know, that was something I could bite onto right away as an actor in, you know, two minutes and 20 seconds that I had to throw it in, you know, to what I was planning on doing. Uh, luckily, that was something I was like, okay, so I, I put a bit of that in. But, um, you know, I have to say, selfishly, like one of my favorite things is people have always said, they've always come up to me, oh man, you did such a good Jared. Like, they've said that for years, like, I love what you did when you were, you know, playing a drill just like Jared. And I was like, it's a huge compliment, but it just, it just happened to work out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I saw that scene right before I was supposed to do my first big scene. But that's how it works in this business sometimes, unfortunately it is, you know. That's why as actors, we really have to come in prepared. 
you got to do your own work because on the day they're going to throw a wrench at you, and they often do. A big one, like that. A Jared size wrench. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hi, so I am also old enough to remember uh, the original Battlestar Galactica. So yeah, speaking of reboots, nice. <laughs> speaking of reboots, if you had to be in another late '70s, early '80s reboot, what would it be, and what character would you play? Late '70s, early '80s. Uh, oh, what was? I think it was actually '90s. Um, who saw uh, Homicide: Life on the Street? Wasn't that a great show? Amazing cop show. So good, man. Fantastic cast, incredible writing. Dude, like, really, I think that was one of the first shows where they were like really messing around with a handheld. Like, oh, you know how they show a different perspective if the cops were sitting around a circle talking? It was one of the first shows to really do that kind of experimental handwork stuff. Like, the handheld camera work. I, I was really blown away. I love that show. I used to geek out on that show. That would be a cool one to be a part of. Again, I'm putting it out there. Cop show in my, uh, in my future. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Good to see you again and again. You too. Uh, so, question about all cock, no bull. Hopefully you guys wore a lot of sunscreen on that set. Next question. Right. <laughs> I was just going to say any fun stories. Fun stories? Well, yeah, hanging around naked with uh, Michael Trucco on James Callis' short film. Freezing hard, right off, first thing in the morning. Let me tell you something about California. California at night, and I'm a Canadian boy, but California, first thing in the morning, and late at night, is very cold. It's cold, especially when you're naked, and you're sitting on plastic lawn furniture. Yeah, she's talking about a short film that I did with a dear friend of mine from Battlestar Galactica who directed and wrote this quirky comedy uh, that she mentioned. And I'm not going to repeat because you guys didn't hear it. No, you should see it. It's funny. But um, my buddy and I, he cast Michael Trucco and I, and we're, you know, we're all from Battlestar. We're all dear friends. And it was a little bit challenging to shoot that show. <laughs> but uh, there was a lot of nudity, and, um, and uh, there may have been a lot of alcohol involved for a couple scenes to uh, deal with it a bit. We had a scene where we were drinking wine, and... We just decided to drink wine. James, the director, was like, you know, maybe slow down on the wine. Just a bit. <laughs> Michael, could you slow down the wine just, just a bit? And we were like, Overrated. you fill it up. They're going to keep doing this scene and get drunk. Because I've been freezing my balls off on plastic furniture at 7 a.m. for this film. James, we love you, but yeah. getting drunk for the scene. Anyway, that was a good experience. I had a blast. When your uh, dear friends ask you to do a short film, you gotta, you got to... You gotta take off your clothes sometimes, and you gotta do what you gotta do. Been there. And on that note, <laughs> thank you guys. portion of the day. However, there's still uh, lots of autographs to be had and uh, maybe a few photographs and maybe some meet and greets. Uh, and then we will eat some dinner and then we'll regather here tonight for a big old concert. So, we will see you there.